my friend Jeremy, who's reviewed several movies and books with me in the past. We're doing a movie review, and the movie we want to review is the 1997 science fiction horror film Event Horizon, which was directed by Paul W.S. Anderson, not to be confused with Paul Thomas Anderson. Now, Paul W.S. Anderson is probably best known for his video game adaptations, like he directed the first Mortal Kombat movie, he directed uh, Resident Evil and Alien vs. Predator, and... He doesn't have the best reputation, like his movies are considered by a lot of people to be very schlocky. Now, I have not seen his first movie, which is called Shopping, but Event Horizon is easily my favorite of his movies. Um, but this was uh, only your second time seeing this movie, right? Yeah, I, I watched it uh, with you the last time, uh, a few weeks ago, and uh, just earlier today for the second time, yes. Now, what do you think of Event Horizon? Because I know you weren't, like, as crazy about it as, like, I am, because I do yeah. really like this movie a lot. I, I think it's very entertaining, and I, uh, I think it's well made. Uh, the uh, production design I loved, I thought that was very good. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. Event Horizon, the best way to describe this movie is it's basically Hellraiser meets Alien. Would sure. you say that's an accurate way to describe it? Sure, yeah, I would say that. With definitely some elements of Robert Wise's The Haunting and The Shining in there as well, and even some Animeville horror, like uh, all the movies I mentioned, I think Paul W.S. Anderson said that those were a huge inspiration for this movie. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and the alien inspiration is just all over this movie. Oh, totally, yeah. Just from the way uh, a lot of the ship looks, I mean, mm -hmm. you can see, that's easy to tell. Now, I first saw Event Horizon, I was actually a little kid when I first saw this movie. I think it was, my dad was watching it on TV, on like HBO or something, and all I remembered from the movie was it was very bloody, and towards the end there was this guy with his face all cut up, and the next day I was asking my dad, Hey dad, what was that movie you were watching? He was like, oh, something about the devil on a spaceship. For years I didn't know what the movie was called. When I was in high school I started thinking about that movie I saw, I was like, what was that movie? And I was driving myself crazy. And then, like, I was watching, like, a YouTube video where a guy was talking about DVDs and Blu-rays he recently got, and one of them was this movie, and he was describing the plot, and I was like, wait a minute, that's the freaking movie that I saw as a kid. So I eventually saw the movie myself, and now it's one of my favorite horror films and science fiction films. So what the plot of Event Horizon is it's set in the not-too-distant future. It's actually set in the year... 2047, which even when this movie came out, wasn't really that long in the future. Uh, but basically, in the movie you find out that seven years earlier, a research vessel called the Event Horizon was sent on a mission, and it just disappeared without a trace, and as far as the general public were concerned, the ship just blew up. But... Now, seven years later, the ship reappears in the orbit of Neptune, so a search and rescue crew is sent up to investigate this and see if there are any survivors, and they go up there with the man who designed the Event Horizon, and basically, in the film, you find out that the Event Horizon had a machine that could actually open up a man-made black hole, basically a dimensional gateway allowing it to travel long distances. And what happens is, when they get to the ship, they find that the crew is all dead. Like, the bodies that they can find are either horribly mutilated or just completely torn apart. And long story short, it turns out that this machine has open the gateway to hell, and this ship has literally been to hell, but now it's come back, and it appears that it brought something back with it, and basically this entity, or demon, or whatever it is, is starting to fuck with the people who come to the event horizon, making them see their worst fears, and... The film stars Sam Neill as Dr. Weir, Lawrence Fishburne as Captain Miller, Joey Richardson as Stark, Jack Noseworth as Justin, Jason Isaacs as DJ, Kathleen Quinlan as Peters, Richard T. Jones as Cooper, and Sean Pertwee as Smith. You can tell that these are people who knew each other for a long time. I think the movie did a really good job at 
making the characters feel real. Yes. I think it had a great cast, you know, Lawrence Fishburne, Sam Neill, uh, Jason Isaacs, Sean Pertwee, uh, uh, great cast, you know. On my first viewing, I actually thought Lawrence Fishburne was uh, very wooden, but uh, on the second viewing, I didn't find his performance to be really that bad. Uh, you know, I thought he had some good scenes, and... Uh, yeah, there's a... Uh... I actually thought he did a good job in this movie, uh, because, like, I always figured, like, the reason he's very monotone in the film is that's just who his character is. Yeah. Like, he's one of the, he's just a very no-nonsense kind of guy. Yeah, on the second viewing, I kind of got that. Um, you know, I, I thought it was interesting how, you know, he's kind of cold and rude to the Doctor, played by Sam Neill at the beginning. You know, the Doctor's trying to kind of introduce himself and be polite and say how much he's glad to be there, and uh, Lawrence Fishburne's Miller character is just having none of it. Yeah. Just saying, getting right to the point, interrupting him. Which you can kind of understand because he does mention how the last time they were that far in space, apparently they lost one of the ships they were with, and like, so, so you can kind of understand why he's pissed off at that point. Uh, but when you think of Dr. Weir, the, who's arguably the main character of the film, because I know, uh, when we were watching it just now, the whole thing where he becomes a villain in the film, you thought that was kind of out of left field? I did a bit, you know, it just kind of happened a bit suddenly for me. I mean, I, I can buy that he was kind of possessed by this entity. Sam Neill did a great job. Oh, yeah. Uh, he, I like Sam Neill a lot. I think he's a very underrated actor. You know, he does a... He played him as good very well, and he also played him as bad very well, especially, yeah. you know, that combined... His performance combined with the extensive makeup effects, you know. I, I do wonder how long it took for them to apply the, you know, makeup that has his eyes cut out and all bloody, and then the later makeup, which is even worse, where he's all cut up. I wonder yeah. how much, how long a makeup process he had to endure for that. That's, that'd be interesting to know. When you find out that Sam Neill's character, his wife, committed suicide a few years prior to the events of this movie, and some of the scenes were like, uh, he has, like, nightmares yeah. about her, and, like, his performance is genuinely heartbreaking in some of those scenes, and he is a very sympathetic character, which kind of makes it suck that he does end up becoming yeah. a villain at the end. Yeah, it does, and uh, the appearances of the wife uh, are also pretty creepy. Now, I don't know if this is what they were going for, but because she committed suicide, now suicide, according to a lot of religions, is supposed to be a sin, and supposedly suicides go to hell, and because this ship literally went to hell, like... I don't know if they were trying to imply that this is the ghost of his wife come back from hell, but that's an interesting way to look at it. Yeah. Or it could just be the entity taking on the form of his wife. I mean, personally, I always thought it was the entity um, yeah. taking on the form, but that's also a very good way to look at it. A uh, co-worker of mine uh, who's really into this movie, he has sort of a theory about this, that uh, Dr. Weir, he knew what, that the ship was going to open the gateway to hell, and he made this ship specifically so he could find his wife. I mean, the, I mean, at the beginning of the movie, he seems to be an essentially good character, so that's yeah. a little hard for me to believe that he would intentionally bring all these people into... But maybe he didn't, maybe he didn't think his wife was in hell, and maybe he designed this machine to open the gateway to whatever afterlife there might oh. be, so mm -hmm. maybe he thought his wife was in heaven. Yeah. It's just a theory, but... That is an interesting way to look at it, yeah, I think. Right. Although, it's never quite clear whether his wife committed suicide before he built the Event Horizon or afterwards, because remember, that was already seven years earlier when yeah. the Event Horizon disappeared. Maybe the reason she killed herself was because he made the Event Horizon, because maybe somehow she knew all the horror and pain that this ship will cause, and maybe that's what drove her to suicide. Smith, I think is his name, or Smithy? I can't remember the name, but yeah, he's a very good actor. Yeah, no, he, I, I thought he kind of stole the movie because he's the one character who's like, really like, let's get the fuck away from yeah. here, like, and you feel his fear, and you know, like, I really liked that character. I also really liked Jason Isaacs in the yeah, movie. Yeah, you know, it's funny, I, uh, 
Jason Isaacs, I'll always remember watching as Lucius Malfoy in the Harry Potter movies. Oh, so yeah. He's a really bad character there, so it's really kind of weird to see him playing someone who's, like, really good here. I mean, of course, he's an actor. He plays different characters. But still, I just, I so associated him with him for a while with that character that, you know, it's a little... Yeah. Odd. This was a subplot that was actually cut out of the movie, because apparently there's a lot that was cut out of this film, but Jason Isaac's character, like, you notice, this is a spoiler, but in his death scene when Dr. Weir, Weir dissects him, you see a scar, a surgical scar on his body. There was a subplot about how when he was a kid he had surgery on him, and it was always his biggest fear to be operated on while awake. So that was kind of like... Dr. Weir and this entity sort of playing into his fear by making it come true. Yeah, by operating on him while he's awake. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, any scenes in the movie that really stood out to you? Well, I'd say all the scenes where uh, Dr. Weir uh, sees his, you know, dead wife, you know, those, like I said, are pretty creepy. Uh, also, you know, I kind of like how, I, I think uh, Miller sort of goes through a you could say a mini character arc. He does start out kind of cold and rude and insensitive, but over time you see that he does care deeply about his crew. When Peters, uh, the woman who has a son who's like a paraplegic, yeah. when she starts seeing visions of her son, those are creepy as shit. Yeah. And uh, I, yeah, that, and I'd also say the scene where, uh, well, spoiler alert, as you said before, uh, DJ gets dissected. That's pretty gruesome. How could I forget uh, uh, Dr. Weir's transformation, you know, with the eyes gouged out and, you know, how he, uh, he gets pretty scary himself. Oh, definitely. Also, the scene where you find out what happened to the crew of the Event Horizon is fucking terrifying and brutal as hell. Also, towards the end of the film, when Dr. Weir becomes a demon and he starts showing Miller those visions of hell, those are also really terrifying. There were some cheesy moments in the film, I would say, like uh, when... Miller is having those visions of that guy who he failed to save in the past who died in a fire. And, like, the guy's like, you let me burn! I thought that was kind of cheesy. Um, now, my one real criticism of Event Horizon is towards the end of the film, there is some very misplaced comic relief, particularly with the Cooper character. Now, I actually liked this character, but again, the comic relief of this character really didn't fit well with the dark tone of this film. But overall, I think it's a very effective horror film. I agree. Pretty effective. I mean, I'm not as crazy about it as you are, but I, I think it does its job. Now, I do want to point out that there are some things that predate Event Horizon that also might have served as an inspiration for this film. Like, you had the Russian film Solaris from the early 70s, which, when Event Horizon came out, a lot of critics compared Event Horizon to that movie. There was the Disney film Black Hole, which had some similar ideas. Like, I think at the end of the film, they do find what could be heaven and hell. Also, in the early 90s, there was a low-budget direct-to-video film called Dark Side of the Moon, which was about these people on a moon base who find the devil. You have the video game Doom, which is very similar to this, and there's also the video game Warhammer, which I've never played, I'm not a gamer, but apparently there are a lot of similarities between this and Warhammer. So many, in fact, that some fans of the game theorize that Event Horizon is unofficially a Warhammer movie, or it's in the same universe or something. Also, prior to this, there was going to be a William Malone film called Dead Star, which never got made, but H.R. Giger was going to design the demons for the film, and if you ever look up H.R. Giger's artwork for this movie, dear God, I wish this film could have gotten made. Now, as far as things that were influenced by Event Horizon, there was the video game Dead Space, which Event Horizon had a huge influence on. Also, this movie might have had an influence on Danny Boyle's Sunshine. He also had the movie Pandorum, which had some of the same producers as Event Horizon, and some people look at that as a spiritual sequel to Event Horizon, with some people even theorizing that the two films are in the same universe. But any closing thoughts on Event Horizon? Oh, I mean... 
it's entertaining, and uh, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I recommend Event Horizon highly. I think it's a very good film. Uh, so yeah, that was our review, and bye. Now, before I end this video, I just want to cut to my friend Chris Espinall giving his thoughts on Event Horizon. I just watched uh, Event Horizon, and um, I have to say, it definitely uh, brought back a lot of good memories. I, w I first uh, came across this movie around 2001. Um, I know that it came out 1997. Um, it, one of the things that threw me off that the main character that Sam Neill plays, um, he uh, he was the, the the solo focus before, but Fishburne's character um, takes over, and I I thought at first that his character was a little bit harsh until you actually find out the backstories, and that's one thing that's very unique about this. Uh, this uh, movie is some of the backstories. A lot of these characters, uh, or at least the main characters, they have uh, similarities when it comes down to losing somebody. You know, um, Fishburne lost uh, a, a close friend of his due to an accident um, that he was um, at fault and will always, you know, feel guilty about. And Neil, his character, his wife committed suicide, so he's tragically scarred from that. One of the things that is crazy about uh, is the amount of, uh, how, how do you say it, misdirection this movie has that I really fucking love. This mo Can I curse? Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I really love in this in this movie that is just amazing. One of the things that I really love about the misdirection is how empathetic. I feel sorry for the character. Like, I feel sorry. He lost his wife. His wife committed suicide. He's, he's tortured by these horrendous amounts of, uh, of hallucinations and it, it, it traverses him deeper and deeper and descending into madness. They're all a bit, one of the things, uh, the drawback is I find it kind of weird that some of these people are going into the ship and they don't know too much information about the ship and you know, Neil's character had to explain himself a couple and they kind of seem pretty, uh, it, it doesn't, to me, kind of fishy on it, you know, I, I, I believe if you're, you're going to go into those type of voids, you will have to have some type of knowledge around, you know, th th that kind of threw me off a bit, but other than that, the atmosphere was great, the darkness was great about it, let me get into the darkness, and the, and, and, uh, and the um, antagonist, like, the beautiful thing about this movie, that I, I felt, and I still feel to this day watching the movie, I feel that same type of feeling, chilling feeling, when you're close to a very pointy object. It could be having a needle, and you, you're, it's the prolonging doom, you know, of it piercing your skin. You can be close to something that's very edgy. It, it's very edgy. It, it, it's thrilling. It puts you on the edge of your seat. You know, it's very sharp, the way that everything is. Um, it has this sort of dark medieval setting. Uh, it, it, it's 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 not really medieval, but the way everything's constructed, when lights are around, you can see the technology. But when it's dark, it looks like a dungeon. It like the way it, the the spikes, the way that everything is formed, the atmosphere of it, it just really looks like a torture dungeon, like a medieval torture dungeon. And then when you see the lights and everything on, it's you can see the technology. Um, it's very odd, and I think it's because the director took some influence from the cathedral and some other places. Um, when I actually look at the ship, it kind of, to me, looks like like the pose of Jesus Christ, like the uh, the crucifix. But he's it's like a, like facing downward. To me, I don't really think that this has the alien feeling to it. I don't feel like alien makes you feel claustrophobic. And this movie makes you feel claustrophobic, but Alien does it in a way of being claustrophobic with something an, or, or a creature or entity or some type of force there. With here, it feels like this is like a haunted house. This is like a uh, space haunted house, like, like going to outer space into a haunted house, a haunted spaceship. It has that shining feeling to it, you know? The, 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 the force 
could questionably be maybe that they traversed into a uh, into a hellish dimension and came back is the beginning of it and um, one of the crazy things about it is I very I felt very uneasy watching this movie I will I'm really wondering like there are some deleted scenes you could find but as far as the the rest of the footage I'm really wondering what it was that that was there that made the directors wanted to really really take that out um, you know I thought it was a gore fest without it so I can just, I just want to know the beginning a cannibalistic orgy scene where the man removes his eyes and he, it's almost as if he looks at the screen and he's offering his he's like a sacrifice he's offering his eyes it's not it's not it's it's very unsettling and then when the person is trying to translate latin and and he he the the mistranslation you know i mean the from the translation from the from his first translation up to the build-up to when he says that he's mistranslated, it kind of put chills, you know. I, I also like that when they were walking into the ship and they said that they 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 discovered life forms, but they found nothing but dead remains, floating icicle corpses, um, appendages, hands just floating around, you know. It, it, it's just a, uh, it's man. It. it when you want to really feel that that in that edge, in a tight confinement space, it really brings that atmosphere in. That warp gate looks very demonic. The 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 orbs and 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 overlapping rings around it. It, it kind of reminds me of the the biblical um, um, descriptions of some of the angels that they are like an eyeball with a warping ring around it. It, but but with all the this the little um, lights that emulates from it, it gives a very very demonic look for for technology. The way everything spears up and breaks apart like in, in magical uh, 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 puzzles and, and emulating spikes and spears that looks a twist between technology and medieval. It really really puts that that fear. That, that that atmosphere around the area is very and I liked it how it plays that Lovecraftian um, type of atmosphere where you don't really know what the force is is it you know this this entity that you know took possession of the ship and 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 it's making these people going insane and it, it knows the deepest dark secrets and some of the things and some of the tragic stories behind the characters instantly as they arrived into the ship or is it that by them being in such a tight confinement and such a scary environment with all of these displayed in front of could have they possibly went insane it's it's it gives you a lot of questions you know a, a lot of questions it, it it does answers a few things but maybe those answers could be lies it could be lies from this the mind you know what I mean again you know did Fishburne's character you know really experience some of the things and and some of the cool things about it that kind of throws me a loop is there's one scene where he comes face to face with his tragedy, his backstory, where he have fucked up in one of his missions and caused a colony to die because of it. And when he comes out and the, and the, and the flames, and he describes, he describes as if he felt the flames, as if it was right there, like the, the, how real the visions are. One of the things that that put a chill down my spine is when he mentions, and I love this scene so much when he mentions that that's just the thing. I've never told anybody about my backstory, but it's somehow it's like this ship knew. They have some things that kind of pushes to make it seem, it, it might be a malevolent force, but yet again, it could be them hallucinating. Um, it's sad to hear that it didn't do well. I didn't know that until you know, revisiting the movie, that the movie was a was uh, a flop, and Paramount Pictures was actually, um, this movie, basically, Paramount Pictures would have been in deep shit if they didn't have a backup, and they weren't exactly sure if Titanic was going to um, 
hold weight. So they were kind of relying on this movie. But when this tanked down, Titanic kind of picked up the pieces for Paramount Pictures. It's 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 a shame that 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 it was like that. But if anything, it just it just shows how great of a movie it is because it has a cult following in it, and we're still talking about it today. There's still um, inspirations from that movie. There's a couple of new movies that came out that you know you could questionably say that they have um, influences to it. There's uh, I I know that there's the Warhammer games that a lot of people from the Warhammer series are very they 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 think that that is like you know part canon to their mythology. Um, I I also know that this was. Uh, an inspiration to the Dead Space video games, so um, you know that's this is my take on the movie. Um, I really enjoyed it. I really loved it a lot, and um, I'm gonna be watching and dissecting it in the future.